Ever since I started RetroRGB, I've seen a lot of misconceptions about display lag and how it's affected by both resolution and refresh rate. So thanks to a couple of new modes that are now available on the Time Sleuth, I'd like to demonstrate exactly what to expect and squash those myths once and for all. Okay, a couple of very quick disclaimers before I begin. First, while I've tested hundreds of panels, I haven't tested every single display on the market. So while your setup might be slightly different than what I'm showing here, I still think this is great general information to have because I think what I'm about to show will affect most people's setups. Also, the device that I'm using to perform these tests is called a Time Sleuth, and it works by sending a signal out of its HDMI port to your display, and then you read with the sensor on back how long it takes from when it's sent to when it's actually being drawn on the display that you're testing. This thing's powered by USB and is a great tool to have, but I'm not going to go into any more detail here because I already did a very deep dive video and page on the website. So if you'd like any more information about this, as well as how to program any of the new resolutions in via the website, please check out both the video and the web page that walks you through everything that you would need to know. Okay, so I'm going to start out with what I think is the most common scenario most people would run into, a low-cost LCD 4K TV. And the first thing I want you to notice is how the latency immediately spikes right when I change resolutions and hold the time sleuth up to the panel. And I only want to point this out for people who also have lag testing devices, because this is just something that most TVs do as they reset their resolutions. The only time you'll see some kind of latency spike like this is right when you switch resolutions, and it will not affect your gaming at all. The only reason I'm bringing it up here is because you might see this happen a couple times in the video, and if you get a Time Sleuth, a Leo Bodnar, a Gilt, or any of the other awesome lag testing devices out there, you might see this yourself. So I just wanted to start out by mentioning this just so you don't have to worry about it. But let's go to 1080p60 and start testing the different resolutions on this panel. So right off the bat, we see a very fast 4.6 milliseconds of latency in 1080p60, and that latency is not changing. It's staying rock solid at 4.6. So I have to pause for a moment here and explain what exactly you're looking at so that we can set the tone and your expectations for the rest of the video. First and foremost, the way this TV draws its image is from top to bottom. So CRTs would draw their image with a beam of light going back and forth from left to right, drawing one line at a time until it completed its frame, and then go back to the top to restart drawing the next frame. That takes about 16.5 milliseconds on NTSC TVs. And on this panel, it draws from top to bottom, each line one at a time, all the way down, and that takes about the same 16.5 milliseconds of latency. So what I'm showing here is this is about 4.6 milliseconds slower than a CRT, which reads at about zero, and that is perfectly fine for gaming. In fact, I don't think there's ever been a test where four milliseconds of latency affected a human's gaming experience at all. Now, there's peripherals that read each line. There's things like light guns that won't work with even the littlest bit of latency. But when you're talking about gaming, this should be considered zero in your head. Now, I've heard people get upset with me for saying that before, but I think it's an honest mistake. I think people are confusing frames and milliseconds. And four frames of lag will absolutely mess up your gaming experience, even if you're not a pro player at all. But four milliseconds is pretty much zero. Also, the other thing to note here is that the native resolution of this panel is 4K and the native refresh rate is 60 hertz. So even though we're running it at a lower resolution of 1080p, you're still getting a very, very low latency because you're running it at the native refresh rate of the panel. Now let's move on to 480p60. And right off the bat, you'll see that latency spike that's a result of switching resolutions that I warned everybody about before. But just be patient for a few seconds and then you'll see it normalize at a very solid 5.2 milliseconds. So now we have to pause again and just reflect on what exactly happened. We're still at 60 hertz and we're still at a progressive scan resolution and the latency 
barely changed at all. And this echoes pretty much what I've seen on almost all other panels. There are some different scenarios and gutches that I'll show later on, but for the most part, this is always what you'll find. Almost zero difference in latency, as long as they're progressive scan resolutions running at the same refresh rate. So that's definitely a myth that I want to squash because a lot of people seem to think that running a panel at 480p60 will get you a ton more lag than running it at 1080p60 or 1440 or even its native resolution in this case of 4K60. And I've never seen more than about half a millisecond's latency in normal scenarios like this. So hopefully this helped squash the myth that 480p60 will have much different latency than 1080p60, because that's just almost never the case. However, when you move over to 480i, things are a lot different. And in most cases, when you're talking about TVs, sending it in interlaced resolution adds a ton of latency. And that's because these panels buffer the image and do some deinterlacing to try to clean up older TV signals, VHS tapes, DVDs, or whatever. They're really not designed for games at all, which is why I strongly recommend never sending an interlaced signal to your TV when gaming. So 480i or 1080i. If you are using those signals, you would really want to use some kind of scaler to deinterlace and set that to any other progressive scan resolution. So that's kind of one of the many reasons why I say never plug your old consoles directly into a flat panel TV and always use some kind of scaler. But that's not new information, that's things we've gone over before. Now I want to switch from 1080p60 to 1080p30, a refresh rate lower than the native resolution of the panel. And you'll immediately see a spike in latency when we do this. And that's because this panel isn't native 24p, which means that its electronics have to buffer a few lines of every frame in order to rewrite that 30 or 24 frame per second image to be 60 frames per second. So as it's doing this, it adds about one full frame of latency, which varies depending on when the frame is being written. So basically on this panel, whenever you go to a refresh rate that's lower than native, it adds one frame of lag. That's about what you would see on most other TVs that I've tested. So whatever the original latency is, plus an extra frame or so. Now, there's pretty much two scenarios in which you'd run into this in the gaming world. The first one's not so common, and that's if you have some kind of HDMI 1.4 equipment in your PC setup, which is locked at 4K30. So let's say you have only HDMI 1.4 monitor or graphics card, and you wanted to try the higher resolution but lower refresh rate modes of a game, you're going to get more latency on your panel as a result. I don't think that's so common, but what is common is the new experimental 4K24 firmware for the RetroTank 5X. And in that case, if you're playing an action game like Virtua Racing, it might look fine because the refresh rate in frames per second of Virtua Racing is about 20, so you're not dropping any frames in that mode, but you are adding a frame of latency to your monitor. So on this particular TV, it's probably going to be fine, but I still wouldn't really recommend that for most action games. Now, running at a panel's native resolution will get you some more sharpness, because you don't have to rely on the panel's internal electronics to scale the image. So if you have some kind of turn-by-turn -turn RPG on an older console, that latency really doesn't matter at all. You could absolutely scale it with the RetroTINK 5X's 4K24 mode and have it look razor sharp on a 4K panel. Or on the flip side, if you have an RPG game that you want smoothed, you could take advantage of the RetroTINK 5X's smoothing filter in order to do that on something like the N64. So you could set that filter and have it smooth the graphics out as it's scaling it to that higher resolution. So there's definitely scenarios in which running 4K24 or 4K30 would totally work out in most gaming setups. I just wouldn't normally recommend it unless you've taken the time to do these kind of tests and analysis on the equipment that you're using. 
Well, I wasn't going to do lag tests on just one TV, because that wouldn't be fair or fun to watch. So let's quickly run through a couple of other TVs and monitors that I had close access to and see how they performed. Starting with my LG C6 OLED, it is a very laggy one from 2016. Unfortunately, this one does not have good gaming performance, even with all of the extra features turned off and in game mode. However, we can use this as an opportunity to prove what I've already been showing in that 480p60 and 1080p60 are pretty much the same resolution on this panel. And then when you switch over to 480i, it adds a bunch more latency as well while it's deinterlacing. The very interesting thing about this panel is how much latency is added when going from 1080p60 down to 1080p30 and 24. It's not just a frame, it's double or more latency. So you could see it at 60 milliseconds with 1080p 30 and even in, up through the 70s in 1080p 24. So unlike the other TV, this is definitely not one that I would recommend using the RetroTINK 5X's experimental 24p mode on. The next example is a pretty common one as well, computer monitors. Here is a native 1080p HP monitor that runs at only two and a half milliseconds of latency in both 480p and 1080p its native mode, which once again squashes the myth that 480p adds more lag. And this is something you could test yourself on any panel you have with any kind of lag testing device. Here's another native 1080p panel, and you can see again that 1080p60 and 480p60 run at pretty much the same latency. One thing to note is the last monitor and this one don't support 1080p 30 or 24, or even any 15 kilohertz modes at all, which is very common with computer monitors. Not all computer monitors though. Here's a BenQ 4K that I just bought that is really cool. I honestly wasn't expecting it to perform as well as it does for the price. This isn't some crazy OLED monitor or anything, but it's very low latency in 1080p 60. It does support 30 and 24p modes, albeit with the higher latency, so I would not recommend this for gaming. But one very interesting thing is it automatically switches to Bob D interlacing for 480i or 1080i modes. And that's something I've never seen before, which is really impressive. That means this truly is a gaming monitor designed for gaming signals, as Bob D interlacing is the fastest with, as you can see, not really any more latency added than it would have had just in progressive scan modes. Here's another interesting one, a 1080p Panasonic Plasma. And like the other ones, the native resolution of 1080p is the same latency as 480p, and just like the OLED, 1080p 30 is double the latency, and 1080p 24 is even more than double the latency, but a few things make this one pretty interesting. First, 480i comes in at the same latency as 480p and 1080p, which is not something that's too common. I think the reason this happens is this plasma TV seems to buffer two frames so that it draws the entire picture at the same time. So at the beginning of this video, I talked about how LCD TVs usually draw their image from top to bottom, and I showed an example of what that looks like with the time sleuth, but check out how that looks with a plasma TV. No matter where I place the time sleuth sensor across the entire panel, it gets the same exact reading. So there's definitely something that needs to be discussed about this. If both a CRT and your average flat panel display takes about 16 and a half ish milliseconds to draw a frame, if a plasma draws the entire frame at the same time and it has two frames of lag, wouldn't that actually mean it only has about one frame of lag? Because you're taking the same amount of time to complete one frame, just doubling it. I think that one's up for debate, and I'm sure there's going to be many people that agree, disagree, or have completely different opinions, all of which I'm really looking forward to read. But I think in my own brain, until I learn more, I'm going to take plasma TV lag and always remove one frame from it in my head, just so I can get a decent idea of what to experience. Because for me personally, about a frame of lag, I could sometimes feel, but I could pretty much always detect two frames of lag, yet I don't feel that latency when I'm playing on a plasma. Plus, plasma TVs look cool as hell. Now, here's a really weird one, a 1080p Scepter brand TV that appears to have the panel mounted upside down because there's less latency at the bottom than there is at the top. 
I'd never seen this before, but in this same house, there was another 720p Insignia brand TV that did the same thing. So these both draw their images from bottom to top. Now, both of these were set to game mode, and both of these are terrible. So I strongly recommend staying away from either of these cheap bottom-of-the-barrel brands if you're looking for gaming. And in fact, price really isn't a factor if you're looking for a fast panel. The TV I showed at the very beginning of this video was about $275, which was only a tiny bit more than these two cheap crappy TVs that I just saw. So it's not about spending more money to get a fast TV, it's just taking the time to do a tiny little bit of research to see which brands have been tested by gamers and which ones have the least amount of input latency. One more thing before I go, analog video inputs on flat panel TVs. For whatever crazy reason, the average flat panel adds more lag for the exact same signal when you put it directly through its analog video inputs. So I'm showing the same exact TV I started out with before, but through its component video inputs. And yes, I made sure to set it to game mode, but as you can see, there's a ton more latency, even though it's the same exact signal coming from the same devices. Now, if for whatever reason you're afraid that the device I'm using is adding latency, please check out another video I did called Lag Testing Retro Scalers that proves that every piece of equipment in my lag test setup adds zero latency to the total image. So it's perfectly safe to use in the scenarios that I'm showing here. And it's also a great video that demonstrates which scalers are actually good for gaming and which are labeled for gaming but are actually scams. Anyway, not only do the analog video inputs of most flat panel TVs add more latency, but many models treat 240p as 480i through one or all of the inputs. Here on my LG OLED, it treats 240p fine through component video, but through composite video, all of those signals are treated as 480i interlaced, which results in a pretty flickery image as well as adding interlaced lag on top of that. So it's even more latency than it would be 240p through the component inputs. Ignore the shaky image here, that was just the converter that I was using to do this one, but you could definitely see that it's treating 240p as 480i, because when I toggle between the resolutions, there's no video dropout, which is a sure sign that that's happening. The Plasma TV, on the other hand, had zero difference between analog and digital inputs, and I think that goes back to what I was saying before about how it probably buffers two full frames so that it could display the entire image at once. So this is actually a great thing if you use HD Retrovision component video cables, because as long as your Plasma treats 240p as progressive, you really don't need a scaler and it'll look totally fine. Sure, going to something like a RetroTINK 5X will make it sharper, but you could just plug in these component video cables and go directly into your plasma. Now, on the flip side, when it comes to PC monitors, I got the opposite results in that analog and digital inputs had pretty much the same amount of latency. And I think that's because TV manufacturers put the electronics in their TVs that's meant to make older TV signals like VHS tapes and DVDs and crappy cable boxes look as good as possible, whereas PC monitors really just focus on getting your connection into the display, which is yet another reason why they're usually lower latency. And in fact, while there is a slight bit of latency difference between the inputs, I would think that overscan and the exact placement of the time sleuth would have more of a factor than actual panel latency. I had a limited amount of PC monitors with both of those inputs to test, so I asked people to send in their footage and they confirmed pretty much what I saw as well. So basically, always double check if latency is important to you, but it seems to be much less of a worry between analog and digital inputs on PC monitors versus TVs. So like I said at the beginning, this isn't some comprehensive in-depth lag test analysis of every single panel out there, but hopefully I was able to paint a very clear picture of what to expect in the average scenarios with flat panel monitors and TVs. One thing I would like to test are panels with refresh rates faster than 60 hertz as their native. And I think what we're going to find is very similar to what we found here. I'm going to save that for another video as I need an entirely different set of tools to do that. But my guess is lag will be doubled 
at 60 hertz. However, when you're talking about panels with milliseconds latency, two or three, and then it bumps up to four or five milliseconds of latency, it's not nearly as big of a deal as something that already starts out at four or five and then gets doubled to 10. Going from two to four isn't going to really be anything you notice in any games. However, that is just speculation and I do not like to speculate in these videos. So I'm gonna save anything over 60 hertz for next time. But most of the panels out there nowadays are still 60 hertz only. So everything I have in this video should still apply to your setup unless you have a brand new 120 or 144 hertz monitor. Well, that's it for this time. If you liked what you saw here and you want to support the channel, please consider signing up for any of the monthly support services or by clicking on any of the general affiliate links that allow you to buy the same exact stuff you are already going to buy from Amazon and eBay for the same price, but I get a few pennies of affiliate commission when you do. So it's a good free way for you to support the channel if you want, and of course, remember to like and subscribe.